Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Pulse Hardware. Today's video I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to ship a desktop computer because that is what I need to do and I've done this actually quite a few times before. Um, maybe you guys have too, but whether you need to ship something to yourself if you're moving or maybe you've done a pay it forward build that you need to get from point A to point B, whether you need to ship to a different state or across the country, there are a few basic best practices for shipping a desktop computer so I'm going to walk you through those today. Uh, I'm also of course going to be packing up my 500,000 uh, subscriber giveaway RGB system back here at the same time. So if you already know all this stuff then maybe you can still uh, watch and get a few tips. If not, uh, then at least this is a reminder to you guys that this system is still up for grabs. I'm packing it up right now, but the giveaway is still ongoing. It's open until Saturday, uh, so I'll post again the link in the description if you guys want to enter that and a uh, lucky winner will be chosen within a couple days after the giveaway period ends and then I'm going to be shipping this uh, in the states that you will hopefully see it in at the end of this video. So all that said, uh, let's get right to it. Okay, I've just realized this doesn't look right without the backlighting. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, so uh, first things first, since I have used this system a little bit, I have a couple logins going on in it and stuff. Uh, I was using this to do a bit of live streaming. I do want to clear it out as best I can. So my plan is to do a secure erase on the SSD. I do want to run a backup on here first. If you are handing down a system or something like that, you obviously want to make sure that you get anything off of it that you might need beforehand. So uh, I got a couple folders here and I plugged in an external drive that's just hanging out right there. This is, this is a very advanced technique here. I'm dragging and dropping. There we go. And then the last thing, of course, is uh, I knew, do need to activate Windows. I need to purchase a Windows license. So for all of the people who have asked me, hey Paul, does the Kingwin thing still work? I haven't tried it in a couple months, but uh, I'm going to try it again, so I'll let you know. In the meantime, I think I have everything necessary copied, so let's jump into the uh, UEFI and see if I can get that secure race going. UEFI on a widescreen is it's really wide. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, one of the things that ASUS has been uh, just included is part of their UEFI and their BIOS. I don't know when they started doing this, but it was a few years back when SSDs became popular. They included a secure race function as part of the UEFI. Uh, that's a great way to do it because it's pre-boot, so um, you're gonna make sure it's completely securely erased. Um, and then we have the drives that are connected, which apparently is just this, <laughs> this <laughs> just the SATA drive. So I can't use it on the, dang it, uh, give me a sec, let me figure this out. So the reason I wanted to do the secure erase from the UEFI is if I boot it onto the system off of the uh, SSD, you can't secure erase a drive when you've booted off of it into Windows. So fortunately I do have another option uh, from Toshiba since this is a, an OCZ Toshiba drive. They have a SSD utility. I will need to create a USB drive to boot from with the utility um, which they have available through their downloads page and then I can boot from that and then hopefully secure erase the drive. Success! Now we take our fancy new bootable USB drive and uh, we plug it in right over here. And now we must boot from it. Okay, it didn't work the first time. I'm thinking maybe it's because I was in UEFI mode. Let's do let's do non-UEFI mode. Oh look. Uh safe mode? Not safe mode. I like to live dangerously. Okay, non non-safe mode didn't do much. Wait, what happened? It keeps giving me these ellipses. And then the computer just turns off. See? Like that. I feel like feel like it's not supposed to do that. This time I am doing safe mode. Damn you ellipses. What do you mean? What are you trying to tell me? Success! Safe mode has gotten us uh, to boot into this utility environment properly, so that's good. Uh, I got our SSD recognized there. I've learned apparently that it's only connecting to a 2 by 8 gigatransfers per second connection, PCI Gen 3 by 2 instead of by 4 probably can update that setting in the UEFI. Okay, I've discovered it, and I promise I'm, I'm gonna stop pointing a camera at a computer screen in a minute, but uh, it's under maintenance, and then tools, and then we have secure erase function right here. Just gonna hit erase, confirm that all my data will be gone, and there it goes. Okay, that completed successfully, and uh, I wanted to also point out, in case any of you guys are watching this video and actually using it as a tutorial, and you're looking at this and saying, well, Paul, I have a hard drive, like a mechanical one like this. Uh, I'll be honest, my recommendation for most people, if you are passing on a system that has a mechanical hard drive in it, or you just have a mechanical hard drive that has sensitive data, 
I do not hand these down to other people. I just take it out of the other out of the machine. I keep it. I keep all my hard drives. Um, it's very difficult to permanently erase data off of these without completely destroying the disk inside. So I would definitely recommend if you're passing down a system that has a mechanical drive into it, in it, uh, maybe just consider just popping that drive out and purchasing a, a, a new, like just an inexpensive SSD or a different mechanical drive to install uh, Windows onto and go about that route because I will never tell you, yes, here is how you can permanently delete all the data off of a hard drive because it's really, it's really hard to do. Um, all that said, uh, let's. I, I'm going to get Windows installing back onto my uh, RD400 on there, and I can actually, I think, move over to actually starting to pack this thing up. Uh, quick aside here, since I pointed out that my uh, SSD wasn't in the right configuration, I have found that here in the BIOS M.2 PCIe bandwidth configuration set to BI2. I am bumping that to BI4 right now, uh, and then I will save this in the overclocking profile which I had saved right here, so whoever gets this can easily just punch this in for 4.8 gigahertz overclock. The CPU might be able to go a little bit beyond that too, but I'll leave that to whoever the lucky winner might be. Uh, in the meantime, let's save this here as 4.8 gigahertz. Cool. Saved profile too. Let's just get that Windows installation going. Any second, there it goes. Uh, and now we can move on to uh, everything else that we need. So to get my packing up done, I have some packing tape, of course. Got a box cutter right there. And then probably the most important thing for shipping a computer is going to be the box that the case came in. Uh, this is a very good reason to keep computer case boxes because uh, whereas I will usually get rid of all the other boxes for a build, case box I will try to hang on to. This is also a good reason why if you're doing like a review of a case because cases and uh, not just the case which might cost like you know 150 to you know down to 50 bucks or so uh, is needs to be kept safe by the box but you might put an entire system in there worth you know a thousand to three thousand dollars and then the box now needs to keep all that stuff safe too. That's why it's a good idea to make sure you got at least decent quality uh, internals and Fantex uses. They don't use the closed cell foam. It's not quite as nice but it's plenty thick. You got at least a couple inches of thickness on either side. I also still have the plastic uh, to put over uh, the system to keep it nice and clean in there especially with the tempered glass pieces. And then not only do I have this box uh, which is also double boxed which is nice but I have this box too. Um, thankfully this is a box from uh, the AMD Ryzen 5 stuff that just arrived because I will be shipping two boxes. Uh, the system goes in here without much else and then everything else is going to go in here. Everything else includes uh, parts I'll be removing which is the graphics card mainly. Uh, I guess mainly just the graphics card but then all these other retail boxes because if I'm shipping a full system I'd like everyone to have as close to the retail experience as they can. So here you can also get an idea if you're not already aware of everything that's inside. So I have the retail box for the 7700K. Uh, bought that just recently, so I wouldn't be sending an engineering sample. The Kraken X62, of course, keeping everything nice and clean. Uh, the G-Skill Trident Z RGB memory kits in there. They have thankfully already sent me a replacement for this, so I will not be going RGB-less from the memory uh, side of things. Maximus 9 Hero, of course, uh, and then the GTX 1080 Strix Edition, also from Asus. Uh, I have the accessory box for the M2 Evolve, which has some kits in there, like the uh, pump mount and some other things that the winner might want to hang on to if they decide to maybe upgrade this to water cooling or something in the future. Uh, and then of course the OCZ RD400 box that also has a riser card in it. I mean not necessary right now but you never know in the future. Uh, and then of course we have the uh, replacement sleeved cable kit for the power supply and the power supply box itself. So winner is going to have plenty of cables uh, because they're not only going to have the replacement kit here they're going to have all the original cables from the Supernova 750G2 as well. So basically here's the plan. Uh, I'm going to pull out, well once once Windows is installed, we'll, we'll get to that and we'll activate it and everything as well. Uh, but once that's done, I'm going to pull the graphics card out because you never want to ship a graphics card inside a system like this. Uh, it's just a really bad idea. You want to pull that out because basically you have to assume that this system in this box is going to be tossed. It's going to be tossed around, it'll land on whatever side it happens to land on, so you're going to have torque and just like impacts going on that a hanging graphics card there in the system might not necessarily be able to withstand. So definitely pulling the GPU out, going to tie extra cables just off to the side so they can't be looser in there banging around and stuff. 
Everything else should be okay. That's one of the nice things about closed loop coolers, liquid coolers like this. And in fact, a big reason why a lot of the boutique manufacturers like, uh, like CyberPower and those kind of people actually like installing these because uh, it's a lot easier to ship this. The radiator is much more secure and there's not a bunch of weight on the CPU block like you'd have with an air cooler. So you can ship it as is. So the GPU is the main thing I'm concerned about. Everything else I should be able to leave in there and just pack up the accessories. And then one final note again for folks who might be shipping a system that has a hard drive installed, I usually pull hard drives out as well and put them in a separate box and ship them separately if I can. Now that's not 100%. Um, you do have hard drive mounts that do do a pretty good job, but especially if you have mounts like this one, uh, this one's actually not terrible. This is a Fantex one, but I believe this is from the uh, N2 Pro. Uh, this is plastic though, it's a little flexible and a drive sitting in a tray like that can get bounced around in a system and I've seen them come where the drive is just completely popped off the rails and the drive itself is hanging out and, and has been banged around pretty badly and you don't want that to happen with a mechanical drive. So I definitely recommend if you are shipping a mechanical drive, pull it out of the system, pack it somewhere else separately and keep it safe for the journey. Windows is all installed so that's good and next I'm going to see if I can activate uh, I'm not going to show you guys this part because I don't want to show you the key, but I'll let, let's see if it works. Windows is activated. That's actually a, a key that I purchased about a year ago too. Like almost little, literally one year ago and it still works. So that's good. Well guys, it looks like the system is pretty much all set up uh, as far as what needs to be done with the software. Uh, Windows update is all good to go. Windows is installed. Uh, I've installed nothing beyond basic drivers. Windows updates, uh, and then I did the Aura software and the NZXT cam so I could plug back in my uh, springtime color scheme, which, which I think looks lovely, especially right next to my Yosemite Valley background. And uh, look, no more activation notice info in the corner. So I think, I think this is like wrapping it up. I just, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess all it's left to do is say goodbye. <laughs>guys uh, my two packages are packed up and ready for shipping all I need is a winner of course so if you guys still haven't entered the giveaway is open through Saturday so uh, link is in the description for that and all the details for the giveaway whether you're uh, in North America or international are in my original giveaway video and I'll post a link to that as well uh, so if you're watching this video I hope you're at least excited about the potential for the giveaway if not maybe you've learned a little bit about uh, some of the nuances of shipping a full desktop computer that's completely built because there are a few details that you should pay attention to to avoid damage during shipping. Now, I'm going to have a blank space here in the corner, so, so I'm going to have to build another computer to go there. So stay tuned for that. And of course, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, though, guys, and we'll see you next time.